Hello and welcome to another one of Mr. Deeping Science Lessons. For today's session you're going to need a book and a pen and in your book I'd like to write down today's title which is drugs and for your starter activity I'd like to make a list of all the drugs that you know and label if those drugs are legal or illegal. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time pause the video and when you're finished we'll go through the answers together. Have you got your answers? In our first task in today's lesson, we're going to look at some illegal and legal drugs. And you can compare your list from today's starter to the list that's coming up. In today's lesson, we're going to state the difference between a recreational drug and a medicinal drug. We're going to explain why some people might start taking drugs. And we're going to describe the effects of drugs on health and behavior. So we define a drug as any substance that affects the way the body works. Sometimes it's good. Antidepressants and painkillers, caffeine and taurine. And sometimes the effect on the body is banned, like that of heroin and cocaine, nicotine and alcohol. Some drugs are classed as medicinal drugs, and these are drugs that have a benefit to health in some way. Other drugs are classed as recreational drugs, where they have no health benefits. For your next task, what I want you to do is to copy this table. It goes down six lines and it's got three headings, medicinal, recreational legal and recreational illegal. And once you've got that table, I want you to put all these drugs that are around the table into the correct column. And if you still want a challenge, I also want to know what sort of people take drugs. And I want you to explain your answer. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock. And if you need more time, pause the video and we'll go through the answers together. Have you got your table filled out? So starting with alcohol and working in an anti-clockwise direction. Alcohol is a legal recreational drug. Caffeine is a legal recreational drug. Calpol, because it has some benefit on health, is a medicinal drug. Cocaine is an illegal recreational drug. Tobacco is a legal recreational drug. Cannabis is an illegal recreational drug, but it also has some medicinal benefits, so if you put it in that first column, that's okay. Paracetamol, because it's a painkiller, is a medicinal drug. Nicotine is a legal recreational drug and it's found in cigarettes. Speed is an illegal recreational drug. Heroin and ecstasy are both illegal recreational drugs. And aspirin again is another painkiller and that's going to put it in this medicinal column. Did you have a go at explaining what sort of people take drugs? Well, if you have a look at this table, everybody takes drugs in one way or another. Whether it be caffeine in their coffee, people smoke cigarettes, people drink beer and wine, and people take paracetamol and aspirin and ibuprofen and cowpol in order to kill pain. So now we can state the difference between a recreational drug, one that has no health benefits, and a medicinal drug, one that does have health benefits. In order to explain why people start taking drugs, I'd like you to draw a stick person. Once you've drawn your stick person, I'd like to give your stick person a name. Then I'd like to give your stick person a job. Then give your stick person some hobbies and I want to know how old your stick person is. After you've finished those four things, I'd like to write two sentences about your person's personality. If you need more time, you can pause the video now and then unpause it when you're ready to move on. So our next task is going to look at what happens when your person goes to a party and your person is offered ecstasy by their friends. Now their friends say they've done it before and that it's safe. So what will your person do? I want you to give three reasons why your person would take the drugs and three reasons why your person wouldn't take the drugs. And if you want a challenge, I also want to know how might the drugs affect your person's personality. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time, pause the video and when you're finished, we'll go through some of the answers together. Have you got some reasons? Well, let's have a look at some of them. So some reasons why your person might take the drug because of peer pressure or to fit in. Remember, all their friends are doing it because they might just be curious about the drug and they may think it's safe. Remember, their friends told them that it is safe. So some reasons why they wouldn't take the drug. They might be scared of what the drug may do. They may be worried that they'll get into trouble for taking the drug. It could be that they're scared of being addicted to a drug later on in life and they may see that as a gateway drug. So if they take this drug now, then later on in life, they're more likely to do other drugs. If you've got anything different or you've had a go at describing how this drug would affect your person's personality, then I'd like to hear about it down in the comments below. So now we're giving some reasons why people might start taking drugs, as well as reasons why they wouldn't start taking drugs. But some drugs will leave you wanting more and can cause addiction. And this is when you need to keep taking the drug in order to feel normal. 
And if you were to stop taking that drug, then you'd have to go through withdrawal symptoms, which is when someone with an addiction stops taking that drug. And some of the common withdrawal symptoms for a lot of addictive substances are headaches, anxiety, and sweating. Now we're gonna have a look at addiction in terms of cigarettes. Now the addictive substance in cigarettes is called nicotine. And this graph shows how nicotine in the blood increases and decreases after smoking a cigarette. So we've smoked a cigarette here between zero and 10 minutes, and you can see that the nicotine concentration has gone up. And then it slowly begins to go down. And you can see this red line here, that is our craving threshold. When our nicotine levels fall below that line, that's when the body is gonna stop feeling normal and you're going to crave another cigarette. For your next task then, what I'd like to do is to use this graph to answer these questions. How long after the first cigarette would it be until you craved another one? And over time, this craving threshold will increase and I want you to suggest why that would happen. I'm gonna put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time, pause the video and when you're finished, we'll go through these answers together. Have you got some answers? So let's look at how long after that first cigarette it would take until you started to crave another one. The first cigarette is finished at 10 minutes and if we follow this craving threshold line along until the black line cuts through it again, you can see it cuts through at about 45 minutes. So we're going to do the difference between the two. 45 minutes minus 10 minutes gives us 35 minutes until we started to crave another cigarette. So over time, we said this craving threshold would increase and to suggest some reasons why it would happen, it's because your body becomes more tolerant of the nicotine. Or if you said something along the lines of the body gets used to it, then that's absolutely fine. We've still got one more graph I want to look at and this shows how the amount of nicotine in cigarettes has changed since 1920. We can see that the amount of nicotine in cigarettes has actually gone down over time. What I want you to do is explain one negative consequence of this trend and one positive consequence of this trend. I'm gonna put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time, you pause the video and then we'll go through the answers together. Here we go. Firstly, relating back to the other graph, you'd have to smoke more cigarettes to stay above that craving threshold. And you can also say that because of this, people are gonna have more lung disease and more lung cancers because they're smoking more cigarettes. A positive consequence of this isn't for the people who are already smoking, but if you're a new smoker, you are less likely to become addicted because there's not as much nicotine in the cigarette. So now we've had a look at the effects of drugs on health and behavior, specifically addiction and withdrawal, using smoking as an example. We've got one more task we need to complete before we wrap this lesson up and you get to choose what to do. You can either write a tweet, 140 characters maximum, and you can hashtag some of the keywords. You can write down two correct statements and one incorrect statement about what you've learned in today's lesson, or you can draw the most important thing that you've learned today. I hope you've had a great lesson, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the lesson. If you found it useful, don't forget to press the like button. And why don't you subscribe and press the bell icon as well so you know when the next lesson's available. You can also support me on Patreon and you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter and I appreciate all the support. And I'll see you next time.